What's up? Pags here at MEI Studio. Today we're looking at another newcomer to the mic game whose goals were to bring analog hardware within reach of just about anybody that wanted it. This time we're looking at Warm Audio and the WA84. Warm Audio was started in 2011 by Bryce Young. Many years before that, though, Bryce was recording his own band at a local studio, and while the equipment was all pretty usable, he felt that the sound they captured wasn't quite up to snuff. So he decided to get into recording himself, and picking up an early 8-track recording unit from Roland, he realized that, yep, this isn't just a plug-and-play kind of thing, and there's a lot more to it than just plugging in a mic and hitting the record button. It was a whole lot more. But, as many driven people do, they make things work with what they have, and started looking into how to get more out of it. And, when you hit that brick wall, you figure out the next steps. Bryce took some recording classes in college and was able to play around with some great gear at school. He took one of his inexpensive mics and plugged it into a high-end Avalon Pre, and one of those pieces of the puzzle kind of fell into place for him. Preamps. They make a big difference. It was then Bryce started looking into mic pre's and what was out there outside of the commercially available units, which were quite expensive. It was this search that he, like myself, discovered the amazing world of DIY audio. As Bryce was getting into the DIY scene, he noticed that there was some really great sounds coming from the equipment that was a fraction of the cost of the vintage gear that it was cloning. By dissecting a 312 style preamp, as many have done, he decided that these circuits already sounded great, so there's not really much of a need to do R&D too much. So he cobbled together some kits and started selling them online. This went well for him, but he had bigger aspirations for this. He, like many, felt that high-end studio equipment was attainable at a better price, and although it's normally looked down upon in the DIY community to take these vintage circuits commercial, Bryce decided to look past that and try to make it work on a bigger stage, but he did decide to do one thing different than most of the DIYers out there. Bulk. That's it. Everything in bulk, mass quantities. By doing so, the hand-picked components that the DIYers were paying $100 for, Bryce was able to get for a fraction of the price. Same component, just cheaper because of that volume buying. That savings was then passed on to the end user, who would go from paying over $1,000 for a 312-style preamp to just over $400. Bryce developed relationships with some of the greatest boutique component manufacturers available today. Cinemag, whom Universal Audio, who we looked at last video, used for their preamps. Carnhill, who was making amazing recreations of the British-style transformers found in Neve products and others. All companies that I've used for my DIY creations that you see behind me. And if you don't know, the vast majority of equipment that we use in this studio is DIY made by me. Either from following a kit or a found schematic online. So what's the difference? Well, take an 1176 compressor for instance. I can kit one together for around $600 for all the parts. Then I have to put it together, which honestly is the fun part. Or I could grab a WA-76 that's using the same transformers that I would have used, the same meters, the same switches, for about $700. So, is my time to put together and test and calibrate worth $100? Yeah, it's probably worth way more than that. However, there's one big distinction here. I know how to put this stuff together, kinda. I'd venture that most people that are doing home recording aren't really into that electrical engineering side of things and either have no desire to learn or, understandably, don't want to deal with the risk of electrocution or starting a fire by not knowing which way to put an electrolytic capacitor in or which end of the soldering iron means business. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. To that person, the $100 difference is a no-brainer. In fact, it's quite a bit more than $100 if you compare what Warm is putting out to what the original manufacturer has price tag on. After some hard-earned success in the mic pre-market, Warm Audio branched into other products like the aforementioned WA-76 compressor, the WA-2A opto compressor, and eventually microphones. Warm currently has a small army of clone-like mics that 
again, are using the same parts that the DIY community has come to know and love, like AMI and Lundhall transformers. Do they hold up? Well, one thing I can say is when Sylvia Massey, who has one of the most impressive microphone collections ever, picks up your mics and uses them for a session, yeah, I think you get the point. To date, Warm has created clones of all sorts of mics, from 47 and 87 style mics to the ridiculously designed Sony C800 for pennies on the dollar to their brand name counterparts. Are there going to be differences between the clones and the real thing? Yeah, of course there are. The head basket and body designs are sometimes very different, which can cause significant tonal changes, but they still give you a great sound that no one's really going to be able to pick out of in a mix, especially after you do some post-production work. Today, in keeping with our theme of small diaphragm mics, we're going to look at Warm's take on the Neumann KM84, the WA84. Warm decided to go true to the original circuit, with a custom transformer by Cinemag that captured the nature of the original. I should shout out to David Guerin over at Cinemag. He's a treasure trove of knowledge and he has helped me out tremendously over the years. The capsule is said to be true to the original design as well, which Warm is making in Asia under direct supervision. And it's QC'd here in the States. The WA84 is a brave attempt at bringing back the sound of a mic that its original creator had abandoned in favor of a new design which not many think fills the shoes of its predecessor. The price tag, 749 USD at the time of this video, is for a matched pair with a hard shell case, shock mounts, clips, and pop filters. Or you can go for 399 for a single mic, still has a hard shell case, shock mount, clip, pop filter. And that's significantly less than the current offering from the company whose mic this is based off of. The Neumann KM184 right now is going for about $15.95 for a pair with the wooden box clips pop filter. Or $8.49 for a single that comes in a cardboard box with a clip and a pop filter. A vintage KM84 will probably set you back about $1,500 or more for a single mic and anywhere between four and 8000 for a well cared for pair. The only other company I feel that's come this far in trying to recreate this mic is Mic Parts and really tempted to grab a pair of those STC-84s to build. Been looking for a fun, quick new project. Anyway, let's get these mics into the studio and see how they sound against some of our other STCs we have in this month. Let's get to it.
there we have it. What did you think? Did the warm audio mics live up to their name with a warm sound? Did you think that they were lacking in some way? If so, what and how? The more I listen to all these STCs, the more similarities I hear with subtle differences between them. I certainly don't hear an $1,100 difference between this mic and the Neumann KM184, but maybe that's just me. Nothing a little EQ couldn't even out, and so why really spend more? And that's going to be the theme of some of the next videos that we have coming up. Warm Audio opened up their own studio a little over a year ago now, and it's chock full of warm gear as well as other high-end vintage gear that doesn't overlap with what Warm does. I wish them the best in their future endeavors and hope they can continue to bring that analog sound to more folks who want it. I've certainly had my eye on one of their mic pre's for a bit. Maybe it's time. As always, if you've gotten anything from today's video, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're interested in studio mics and other things audio related, hit that notify button so you'll be notified when we put up a new video. If you have any suggestions for a video or any questions regarding this one, again, please use the comment section below, send us a message through our website, I'd love to hear from you. Well, that's it for this time. This is Pags, signing off. <laughs>